Hello, hello, everybody. Um, I'm just going to spotlight me. I'm just going to make sure that my microphone is working. Um, lovely to see so many of you already. Um, we are in for a really super evening. We're going to have a really, really lovely evening here. I'm going to be um, giving you a load of information to start off with and uh, and then you're going to have a chance to um, ask any questions you like and I will answer them, which should be fantastic. Um, unusually, and well, not unusually, but I've changed the format a little bit so that I can actually see you which is really nice. And I can actually talk to you as well. If you want to talk to me, that's brilliant. If you don't want to talk to me, to talk that's to me. not um, that's not a problem. You can, um, uh, you know, you can type your questions into the chat, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm just going to make sure that everybody can actually see uh, the chat. Uh, hang on a second. So let me just look at the meeting the chat. Uh, Hang on a second, just make sure that uh, we can actually, everyone, participants can chat to everyone and anyone directly. So do pop something in the chat if you want to say hello. Oh, there we go. There we've got Stephanie, Stephanie there saying hello, which is really nice. Sometimes the chat goes off and nobody can actually, um, nobody can actually put anything in there. I'm like, oh gosh, we've got no, nobody wanting to say anything and it's because I've got it switched off. Um, so uh, welcome everybody. It's lovely, lovely, lovely to see you all. Um, and um, uh, yes, really, really nice to see everybody. If you can just make sure that you're on mute um, all of the time until we start asking uh, questions, that'd be great. It just saves me from, from keeping on clicking on mute all so that we don't get background noise or anything like that. And I'm just so happy to see so many of you here. Um, this is going to be a Q&A session. Um, so I am going to uh, do a quick presentation. I'm going to go through a load of stuff. And, and then we're going to do a Q&A afterwards. So you can put whatever questions you want um, over to me. You can either put your hand up and ask the question um, through Zoom, or you can pop something in the chat. Um, what I would say is if you've got a question that you want to ask in the chat, wait until we've done the presentation bit, um, because I'm going to ask you to actually write the word question before you actually type your question. And then I can go through and I can easily find the questions that I want to answer. So um, really lovely to see so many of you here. And um, it's, it's very, very exciting. This is the kind of stuff that I love doing. I love sharing everything that I know um, and, and any question uh, that anybody wants to ask me, I'm, I'm really happy to do that. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to start off. I'm going to get going quite quickly because we only have an hour and and I do tend to run over <laughs> because I do love to chat, um, you know, so and I want to give you as much information as possible. Uh, tonight. So I'm going to start uh, in a second. I'm just going to wait a couple, another couple of minutes, get let everybody come in. Um, I'm going to start with a with a presentation and I want to talk to you about my uh, my three tips, basically, for developing your art, your art, staying motivated um, and also staying in love with your art. It's so easy to get demotivated to lose focus to fall out of love with it all and I want you to I want to give you some of the the tips and I want to go through a little bit of my journey about how I got where I am now um and then um share some tips with you as well so that hopefully you can keep on keep on drawing and keep on loving what you do and then we're going to be um then we're going to be doing some some questions so we've got all sorts of people come in here we've got loads and loads of people saying hello in the chat which is amazing um I've, i'll just pick out some here we've got uh, there's there's linda here from missouri uh lindy from uh from ohio there's millie from the uk hi millie in wiltshire there's vera from austria uh, Diane from the UK as well in Surrey, um, Bernie uh, from, um, oh, oh, hi from, hi from Live Free or Di I don't know where that is, uh, Illinois, uh, we've got Carol there and we've got uh, Christiane from Brazil, uh, so many people, it's so, so, so lovely to, to see you all here. So I'm going to make a start, I'm going to put everybody on mute, if you can try to keep yourself on mute if that's okay. Um, uh, let me say, let me just see if I can, uh, yeah, 
mute all on. Yeah, that's fine. So if we can just keep everybody on mute uh, and then once we start asking the questions, then you can come off mute uh, and uh, and we can and we can carry on. So, um, yeah, I am going to start with a presentation. I want to talk to you about my top tips for staying motivated, staying you know keeping the love of your art um, and your development as well so i'm going to share my screen um, so let's share my screen here so if you can just make sure that you keep all of your uh, microphones muted that would be amazing um, i'm just doing that there okay so we are starting on this page here um yeah please just keep everything uh, keep your microphone on mute when you um, when you join i have got it set to that but it seems to be we seem to have uh, the the microphones uh, coming back on again so just try and keep everything muted so today we are going to be talking about my top uh, tips for developing your work staying motivated and falling in love with your work time and time again and the reason I the reason I've chosen these as uh, top tips that I want to talk about because this is this is kind of what happened for me. This is my journey. Um, hopefully, you will kind of have an idea about when I started, what I did, how I did it, um, and I've now got to the point now where um, it still feels really, really strange saying this, but I have built um, a, a million pound company from purely from my art um, and that to me is amazing and I really really want to uh, tell people about it tell people what I did because I want that for other people I want other people to be able to do what I've done because there's nothing remotely special about me I'm just a normal person I guess the special things about me are that I have self-belief in abundance uh, I have perseverance and I am completely and utterly passionate about what I do and helping people. And I guess those things, when you combine them and you bring them together, um, are, are, are pretty much, um, you know, the reason for why I've made a success of my business. So um, the first thing I want to do is I want to tell you a little bit about me. OK, I'm sure you will know who I am. Hopefully, you know who I am. You, you've seen me on social media. I'm a uh, I'm a single mum. Uh, I have, you'll see a, a, a faded picture of me here. <laughs> I hate having my photograph taken and I had a photo, photo shoot done and I absolutely loved it. And I love the photographs and it is just wonderful. And I, I've got th four dogs, a cat, and I've got three children. And um, we haven't always had the most amazing life and we've had some pretty rubbish times. However, there's always been a part of me that has has sort of uh, said it's going to be okay everything's going to be fine everything's going to be okay and when I started my business back in uh, 2017 um, I, I just had the self-belief that it everything was going to be okay and I would make a success of it and that's what I kind of want to talk to you a little bit now before I get into some of my the other reasons for um uh, you know, some of my top tips. So we're going to start with 2016. So 2016 was when I discovered my colored pencils. Uh, my daughter gave me a coloring book and some WH Smith pencils. Anybody in the UK will know WH Smith and then anyone in the UK will know that co coloring pencils from, from WH Smith aren't going to be particularly brilliant and they weren't. Um, but I absolutely fell in love with colored pencils. I hadn't done any art or drawing since I left school in 1987. Um, so it was all sort of, you know, coming back to me, it was all, you know, I, I, um, I just, I just fell in love with it basically again. What I did was I prioritized, and the reason I'm going through this is because these are part of my top tips that I want to talk to you about. I prioritized my drawing. I had a family, I was married, I had a full-time job, I had a horse, I had dogs, um, you know, I, I was a busy person anyway. And I prioritized time for my drawing because I realized it was something really special for me. Um, and in 2016, I started to do commission work. 2017, I became a full-time artist. Literally on the 1st of January, uh, 2017, I became a full-time artist. I quit my job and I decided I was gonna go full-time. Um, it was a leap of faith, but I had the belief that I could do it. 
It was the year that I had my work published for the first time, and it was the year that I won a Best in Show um, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an exhibition. 2018 was when I ran my first workshop. So um, I did have a business plan right from the beginning back in 2016. When I decided I was going to go full time, I did have a business plan as to what I wanted to do. And that I'm going to be talking about a little bit later because that's all about the planning side of things. So in 2018, I ran my first workshop. Um, in 2018, I had an 18 month wait list for my commissions. Um, and that's when I actually started my wait list as well, rather than trying to get commissions in all of the time. And in 2018, I started to think about teaching online because at that point, I wasn't teaching online. I was running workshops face to face. 2019, I launched my Patreon channel. Um, my Patreon channel was a brilliant step into teaching online. Um, you know, it really got me out there and um, I did I did really, really well with Patreon. I held regular workshops, in-person workshops, and something that's really, really important to me, I had regular critiques from expert artists. Uh, that was a big step for me in 2019, and I saw a massive development step when I had that critique from, from the expert artist. The expert artist who critiqued my work was Aaron Gadd. I've spoken about him numerous times before. Wonderful man, incredible artist. Um, Aaron Gadd, A-R... O-N-G-A-D-D, -D, uh, a British artist, realism, colour pencils. If you don't follow him, you need to do. He is amazing. Um, 2020, I employed my first team member uh, and she's still with me, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, tw in 2020, I took my workshops online, obviously because of what happened with the pandemic and everything. I moved everything online. Um, it was quite scary because I had you know, I was used to teaching in person. So teaching online was 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 very new. It's all very well doing a um, a, a tutorial online when you're sitting there and you're, you're pre-recording it. But when you're doing it live, all sorts of things can happen, tech problems, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I took my workshops online in 2020. And in 2020, I hit nearly 2000 members in Patreon, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, 2021, I had my first book published again just incredible uh you know a lot of hard work but it was it was wonderful um I employed a consultant to help me with creating my academy so I was I had Patreon since 2019 sadly I um I, I found that 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 Patreon wasn't giving me or my students the experience that I wanted there's a, a very strange sort of singular uh um oh hang on a second uh singular um uh, scroll feed, um, which is really, really frustrating. So the, the navigation wasn't particularly great and their customer service wasn't particularly great either. So that was frustrating. So my dream was, do you know what? I'm going to create my own online platform, uh, which was not an easy task at all. And it took a huge amount of work and thought. And, uh, you know, I invested an awful lot into it. But I employed a consultant to help me with creating the academy. And in September 2021, I launched my teaching platform, the, the, the Bonnie Snowden Academy and my Ignite membership group. 2022, I employed two more team members, um, which has enabled me to do the things that I love to do. And this is really, really, really important. When you first start out as an artist, if you're wanting to, you know, if you're wanting to branch out and you want to create a business from it, it's really important to understand that you can't do everything. I'm really good at delegating. So, um, creating a team around me has been uh, relatively easy. Sometimes it is quite difficult to give things up, but it's meant that I can do the things that I'm really good at. I'm really good at teaching. I'm really good at drawing. I'm really good at talking. <laughs> I'm really good at chatting to people. So my podcast was, again, an amazing thing that I started in 2022. And it, I get to speak to, you know, incredible people in there. And I have the time to be able to do it. 2022 um, I, I saved up and I was able to build my my garden studio which is absolutely beautiful and I started writing my second book which is I'm still writing it it's, it's going to be quite a long one <laughs> um, 2023 my focus is all on my drawing and my teaching so I'm concentrating on my drawing and my teaching I am planning things like retreats and I am planning merchandise um so there's a journey there of sort of seven years and that kind of takes you through. I planned right from the beginning. I had a dream right from the beginning. 
I prioritized my time so I could do the things that I really wanted to do that I was really passionate about and I've been successful I've, I've followed through I've done what I said I wanted to do because I had a vision right from the start so we're going to go into some of these tips now and this isn't all going to be a uh, um, slideshow and everything like that I'm going to not share my screen in a second and I'm, we're going to be going through some questions um, developing your work so the, these are the tips that I want to talk about today time time is so important time is so important um, know where you're headed and understand what your focus needs to be these are all of the things that I looked at when I was planning my business Okay, so time. Uh, oh, hang on a second. There's something that's arrived and um, he hasn't knocked on the door. <laughs> hang on a second. We always get this. We always get these. Um, oh, no, hang on. Oh, no, he's got it. He's got it. <laughs> I think there's a pizza that's arrived. <laughs> so time. We all have 24 hours in a day. Nobody has any more and nobody has any less. We've all got 24 hours. It's up to us as to what we want to do with those 24 hours, okay? Now, one of the biggest excuses that I give myself and one of the biggest excuses that I hear from other people is I don't have time. I'm really sorry, Bonnie, I don't have time uh, to, to, you know, put in uh, the hours that I need to develop my drawings. Um, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. And it's an excuse that I have used in the past. And I have to really stop myself from saying, I'm really sorry, I don't have time. Actually, I have all of the time in the world for what I want to prioritize. And for me, prioritizing my art was exactly where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. So what did I do? I stopped watching television in my lounge. And I, if I wanted to watch a film, I would watch it whilst I was drawing. Um, I, oh, hang on a second. Just mute everybody again. Yeah, please do try and keep yourself muted. I, it gets really frustrating with Zoom because you tell it tell it all to be Zoom, muted and then it and then it doesn't. Um, uh, yes, so I I prioritized my drawing time. I made my drawing time really really important. I got up a little bit earlier, um, which you know sometimes is is hard. Sometimes is a little bit easier. Um, I made sure that I had time and I'd scheduled my time for doing my drawing, and that was really important. If I hadn't have done that. I would not have developed and I would not be where I am today. I'm not saying everybody wants to be in, you know, running a, a business and everything like that. But if you want to develop your work, you have to put the time in. And if you don't put the time in, you're not going to develop your work. So it's a priority if you want it to be a priority. Um, some people manage to cram more into their 24 hours than others. And why is that? A lot of the time it's because of their time management. They are really, really good at managing their own time. Um, you know, they they know how to, they know not to multitask. I was going to do a quick, um, a quick exercise, which I'm going to hold back on because I, I was thinking it might get a little bit complicated. I always used to think that multitasking was a really great skill to have. I now understand that actually multitasking is not, not actually a thing. <laughs> it doesn't actually work. If you try and do multiple things all at the same time, um, it starts to get really complicated and actually it takes you far longer to do the things when you try and do them all at the same time. The energy that you put into something and then you're trying to you go from email to, you know, um, doing a tutorial back to sorting a message out back to doing something else. It's, you know, it, it really, really does take away from the, uh, the the focus that you're trying to to bring into whatever it is that you're doing. Um, so the people who do manage to get more done generally are really good at managing their time, not multitasking, but actually focusing on the task in front of them, getting that done and then moving on to the next. Prioritizing your needs is really, really important. I am I am I've been dreadful in the past for this. I prioritize everybody else's needs ahead of my own. And we all we all do this, but you know, our needs come bottom of the pile. So we're there, we want to do our drawing, but you know, so and so wants to go out here, so and so wants to go out there. Um, I've got to get the washing done, I've got to make the tea, I've got to sort the dogs out, I've got to go to work, I, you know, got to do the shopping, got to do the garden, got to mow the lawn. All of these things obviously are important, but some of them can actually wait. Some of them can, can be put to one side. Some of them can be delegated to somebody else because 
doing things that bring you joy and make you happy enables you to have a better relationship with everybody around you. You know, if you're always doing other things for other people, you are going to find that your uh, your joy disappears and you you start to become resentful. Um, and and that's really not not a lovely thing to happen. So really prioritizing your needs. If you want to learn to draw, if you want to develop your drawing, you find time to do that and you prioritize what you want to do and other stuff can stop. I stopped ironing. I, you know, <laughs> I used to iron for four hours on a Sunday afternoon. I mean, warranted, I listen to, to, to Radio 2 and it's quite nice on a Sunday afternoon. But four hours of ironing sheets and, you know, vests and socks. And wh why was I doing that? So I stopped ironing and I got myself back four hours on a Sunday afternoon. Um, you know, people people can live in a bit of a crumpled shirt <laughs> or you can just hang them nicely. And, they, you know, there's certain things that we tend to do that actually don't really, really need doing. And because, again, we're prioritizing other people's needs in front of ours. So look at your time, really look at your day, your week, your month. Where can you find time to be able to put that precious schedule in for doing what you want to do? And that hopefully that is to develop your, your drawing. So time is really, really important. Know where you're headed. So what is the vision? What vision have you got for your, you know, your art, your creativity? Is it, you know, a, a hobby? You just want to have a lovely hobby where you sit down and you and you draw. And that's exactly where I started. It was a hobby. And then it soon became something much, much bigger than that. But I had the vision right from the beginning. You know, I knew what I wanted to do. So I could then pick up on, on opportunities and work towards where I wanted to be. So have a vision and then decide on what your vision actually is you know, write it down, say it out loud. As soon as you say something out loud, you get it down on paper, it becomes it becomes something that's that's tangible and it becomes something that's real. So, you know, if you've got dreams of hyper-realism or dreams of something a little bit more painterly, do you dream of quitting your job, uh, becoming a full-time artist? Do you have dreams of teaching online? These are all of the things that I had when, back in 2016, when I first started drawing. Hyper-realism, I, I don't really have a dream of hyper-realism. I admire it, but it's not really something I want to do. I, I, I tell people I'm lazy all of the time and I really am lazy. Um, <laughs> I know a few people will testify to that, but, you know, hyperrealism takes that extra little bit of concentration and, you know, really getting all of that detail and everything. My work, I want to be real. I want it to look real, but I'm not looking for that like photo realism. That was that was always something that I um, I looked at when I first drew my first picture. I was very proud of it. I think, you know, a lot of you have seen that piece. Um and then I realized that I wanted to push that and I wanted to make it something else. So I, I, I had a vision in my head as to what I wanted my drawings to look like. And that's what I went towards. That's what I, I, I kind of focused on. Um, a dream of quitting my job to begin with. I didn't really. It was a hobby. Um, I didn't think right at the beginning, I didn't think that I could make a living from from art. Um, and I was incredibly wrong, uh, you know, but again, when I did decide that I was going to be a full time artist, I had my business plan and I did have dreams of teaching online. So I had all I knew where I was going right from the beginning. I knew where I was going. And if you know where you're headed, you can make a plan of action. And this is so important. Now, I am a chaotic person. I'm not a very organized person at all. I've, I live in chaos. I've got chaos everywhere. Um, people ask me how I managed to keep my drawing paper so clean. I use pastel mat an awful lot, white pastel mat. And people go, how do you manage to keep it so clean? And I'm like, I have no idea because everywhere I am is dust. <laughs> I've got dogs. I've got I've got rugs in here. I've just bought a new sheepskin rug for the dogs. I've got dust everywhere. I have no idea how I keep it clean. Um, chaos everywhere. But on my drawing board, it's calm it's clean I only have one piece on there it's set out how I want it to be set out I knew where I was headed from 2016 I had the vision and I stayed with that vision and that is really 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 important now your focus again part of the the, the planning and the vision where do you need to focus your attention if you are developing your drawing what is it in your drawing that you need to develop 
Okay, so you look at your drawing, and you think, you know what, I'm brilliant at eyes. And I really want you to say, I am brilliant at, I am really good at drawing. I am really good at this. Not, oh God, oh, well, I think, oh, well, oh, I could have done better there. No, we want the self-belief. We want the, we don't want the big headedness. We want the self-belief and we want the confidence to come through. So where do you really need to focus your attention? Take your latest drawing, look at what you've done really, really well and go, do you know what? I've done that really well. I love how I do eyes. And I think I get the, the glassiness and the realism and everything like that. I'm really great at eyes. And then you look at the parts of your drawing where you think, oh, do you know, actually I could do with a little bit of help developing this kind of fur. It could be long fur, it could be short fur, it could be curly fur. Then you look at what comes easily. What, what, what do you find that's relatively easy for you to do? Um, you know, I now find it really easy to do eyes. I've done so, so many thousands of eyes. I find it really easy to do eyes. What do I find challenging? For me, I find smooth subjects quite challenging. Um, you know, the, the blending, particularly on a smoother surface, I find that quite challenging. Um, and then, we make the plan of action. And, and a lot of the time it's like, well, all you need to do is practice. Um, and the only way to get better at something is to practice, right? Um, and yes, it is, but you can practice till the cows come home and practice all of the wrong things or practice doing the same thing over and over again. And you're not going to actually develop. You've got to practice the right things to get better. So if you are finding uh, curly fur tricky, Practice doing curly fur, but but do your research. Go and look on, you know, YouTube. There are some amazing tutorials on YouTube from, uh, you know, so many different artists. There's so many different ways of doing things. Go and have a look at how they're doing it. Uh, you know, join a fantastic group. Uh, I've got I've got three fantastic groups. You know, you don't have to join mine, but join a fantastic group where you can ask a question and somebody who's more experienced will come up and they will help you and they will show you what to do. Buy a tutorial, subscribe to, you know, one of the amazing magazines that you can subscribe to. Join a, a, a patron or, or join my academy. That, that would be the best thing. Join my academy and I'll teach you how to draw curly fur. Um, but find something that's going to help you. Find, uh, you know, either a YouTube or a tutorial or whatever, and find something that is going to help you with this particular challenge that you've got. And then you'll know what you need to practice to get it right. Staying motivated is really, really key, particularly if you decide that you want to, um, you know, go into business or that you just want to enjoy a hobby. Staying motivated is, is important, whatever you want to do. And these are some of my tips, OK, to stay motivated. Make a space of your own if you can. When I first started, I drew at my kitchen table and I had to clear everything away every night. And it came, it did become a little bit frustrating for those, the rest of the family and for me as well, because I had to clear everything away. But if you can make a space of your own, it becomes like a little sanctuary. It becomes this really lovely space where you can go and you can, you know, you can do your drawing and you can, um, you know, you can have all of your pencils around you. You can have your candles, you can have whatever, but it's a space of your own. It doesn't have to be a massive room or a studio or anything, just a, a little space where you can keep your work out. Challenge yourself, you know look at something and go, don't look at a, a photograph and go, I'll never be able to do that. If you see a photo and it really makes your heart sing, use it, draw it, give it a go, challenge yourself, you know, to, to push yourself, to develop, to get better. You know, don't look at something and go, oh, I could never do that. Never ever put that negativity into your head. Look at a photograph and go, that, that looks challenging, but I'm gonna give it a go. Draw what you love. Um, this is why none of my tutorials are of pairs. Um, I, I don't love drawing pairs. and I don't want to teach people to draw pairs. I want to teach people to draw animals, humans, flowers. Um, there is definitely a place for, for drawing pairs. And it's, you know, there is quite a, a um, it's quite good for kind of understanding about light and shade and all of that kind of thing. But I don't want to teach people how to, I, I just wouldn't love drawing a pair. So you won't find any pairs just yet in my tutorials. Try not to procrastinate. Oh my goodness, honestly, um, procrastination is just the absolute thief of everything. And we all do it, we all procrastinate. And you can sort of be sitting there and suddenly, all of a sudden you think, oh, I'm procrastinating here. I, I, I do it when I'm teaching. 
you know, I'll waffle on about something else because I don't want to get onto this bit. If you find yourself doing everything under the sun other than drawing, ask yourself why. What is it that is stopping you from sitting at your drawing board or your table or your easel or wherever? What is it that's stopping you from doing it? It could be fear of anything. It could be fear of success. It could be fear of failure. But ask yourself why. Because that's a really, really important question to have with yourself. Why am I not going and doing my drawing? Um, and again, like I said before, find a community you can ask questions and get support from. That is a really amazing way of staying motivated. You know, having that accountability with somebody else, um, you know, oh, I'm drawing this. Oh, I'm drawing the same thing. Or, you know, let's have a conversation together. How are you getting on? Blah, blah, blah. A community is going to really build you up and keep you built up and keep you motivated. And fall in love with your work. Oh, my goodness. I get so sad when I see I saw another artist on Facebook. She'd ripped her work up and put it in the bin. And it made me so sad. I have never, ever, ever once ripped a piece of work off my drawing board and thrown it in the bin not once I've never lost I've never lost patience or got angry with any I've never never every single piece I do is a learning curve for me even if it's absolute rubbish and I have produced some absolute rubbish pieces you know even if I start a piece and I go mm, actually do you know this isn't working I'm going to take it off and I'm gonna start again I don't put it in the bin ever it goes in my drawer and every now and again, I will take it out and I will have a look at it and I'll go, do you know what? That was a really great decision to restart that piece. And I really like the fact that I've still got it here to reflect on and go back to. Mindset is absolutely key when you're working on your skill levels. Mindset is the thing that is going to make or break you. And it is something that you can change. It does take work. Um, I, I tend to have a very positive outlook on everything, really. Um, and I'm lucky in that respect. You know, I know not everybody is built like me. I, I have some terrible traits, but mindset for me and positivity is, is, is pretty good. Trying to work on your mindset is really important for working on your skill levels. Take the time to admire what you've done. Take the time to look at what you've done. I, I know, um, I don't know whether she's here uh, today, but there's um, wonderful Lala, um she's in she's in my membership and she she does her own teaching and she does uh, and she came on my retreat last year and she and I were literally crying over her drawing that she'd done because it was so utterly beautiful that's what I want you to do I want you to look at your piece and I want you to cry because it's so beautiful um you know and, and it's your your little moment where you look at it and you go, oh my, have I really done that? Have I, that is just, and, and that, it gives you goosebumps. It makes you feel absolutely incredible, uh, you know? And I want you to practice doing that because it's so, so important to love your work. Remind yourself of the skills that you need, that you need to do what you're actually doing, okay? And then remind yourself that you've actually got those skills. Even when you're starting out, you know, I've got the skills for layering. Oh, my goodness, I can create a cat's eye. Um, you know, oh, gosh, um, you know, I, I've managed to mix these colours together. I've managed to blend. Remind yourself of the skills. Coloured pencil is hard. It's a hard medium, you know. And as soon as you start drawing, remind yourself about how amazingly you are doing and how brilliant your, your work is. And finally, be in total awe of the work that you're doing right from the beginning. You know, gasp. I've, I've written this down. Gasp, cry, fall in love with your work, because if you love your work and you are so, so, so proud of it, all of that pride and that energy and that wonderfulness that you, you have in your body is going to be put into everything that you do. When you, when you put stuff onto social media, it's gonna come out in your words, whether you like it or not, it is going to come out in your words. If you are, um, you know, if you post and you're not happy with your work, it's gonna come out in your words. So be happy with your work, love it, love what you do. Um, because if you love what you do, you can do the most incredible, incredible things. Um, 
everything that I've talked about in this last however long, oh gosh, half an hour, God, I do waffle on, don't I? But everything that I've talked about is what I have done over the last seven years. And I now have a business that is giving me the most fantastic quality of life. And, and I want that for everybody. I want that for everybody. So my final slide basically is, uh, I'm just giving you a heads up. I've got two live events coming up this next Sunday and the Sunday after. If you haven't signed up, do because <laughs> we're not doing a speed drawing this time. Yay! <laughs> we're not doing a speed drawing. We're doing a slow one. Um, we're going to be working on pastel map. I'm going to be drawing an eye on uh, this coming Sunday. And then using the same photograph the following Sunday, we're going to be drawing an ear. So we're going to be drawing an eye and then we're going to be drawing fur. It's a, a beautiful dog. And I've given you the whole reference photo, the whole line art. And then even more excitingly, the rest of the tutorial is going to be available in the academy. If, so you can either do it on your own, finish it on your own, or you can finish it in the academy if you like. Um, and the academy opens for new members on the 3rd of April. So if you're not on the wait list and you do want to join me, uh, get on the wait list because you'll get the invites coming through then. So I'm now going to um, stop sharing. You'll be pleased to hear. I'm going to come and have a look at all of your lovely faces. Um, and I'm going to ask anybody who wants me to answer any questions. Now, you can either raise your hand. Um, there's a little box down at the bottom that says reactions. You can click on that and there's a little button that says raise hand. So if you want to ask a question personally, click on that and I'll come to you and I'll, and I'll, um, and I'll ask you to ask your question. If you want to ask a question um, in the chat, please do so, but add the word question in front of it, okay? Um, so that I can go through those and I can I can read them and I can answer you. So I'm gonna come first of all to Anne there. I'm gonna ask you to un unmute Anne to ask your question. Are you there, Anne? Anne Scott? You got your hand up? No, yeah, are you there? Right, I'm gonna to come to Sharon instead, Sharon Crawford. No, Sharon? Oh gosh, they've all got hands up, but they're not, <laughs> they're not unmuting. Okay, so I'm going to come to um, Anne, Anne Marik. Can, can everybody? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Do, do you want to <laughs> unmute? You'll need to unmute. Oh, I'm not sure this is going to work very well. Oh, here we go. I'm no, unmuted there now. Go. There we go. <laughs> here we go. Sorry. <laughs> Um, did I have to put something somewhere like question? I don't remember what you said just now. No, you can ask a question here. Well, the trouble is I will be in a remote area before the academy opens, but I do want to draw. I will be in Scotland in the Outer Hebrides. Oh, how nice. My question is, I won't have Wi-Fi or a signal to do your tutorials in the meantime. What can I do to be able to draw anyway? What can I use? Can I use your book? Can I use, what can I do? Absolutely, absolutely. You can use my book. Um, I also have the draw alongs that are on YouTube, which have got all of the links and everything. So you could download them beforehand. Um, right. Yeah, so you could download those. You can download the reference photos, oh, the reels yeah. links, all of that kind of stuff. Oh, hang on a second, who's that? Can I download the YouTube video as well? Uh, uh, yes, you can. Oh, right. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. You can download the YouTube video, too. Absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah. So you could do that. The other thing as well is that I have got uh, I have got some PDF downloads. So if you were desperate to you wanted to draw something, I've got quite a few PDF downloads that you can you can use as well. What do you recommend for a beginner uh, I, out of those PDFs. So I would recommend um, the Bernard. The Bernard. <laughs> he's a little oh, terrier yeah. he's a terrier a little a terrier okay. yeah so i would recommend that and i would recommend having a look on youtube and um and doubt anything that you find there you should be able to download the the video yeah. thank you very much you. no problem very helpful thank you thank you, thank you. can i interrupt no for a second oh hi hilda yes just to say to Anne that there may not be internet connection where she is uh, in lewis or harris or wherever she is near to hebrides but there will definitely be internet connection on the island if she goes somewhere to somewhere else. There will be it will be available in a library or somewhere. Oh, thank you, Hilda. Yeah. So that's a good tip. 
Good tip. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Um, right. OK, so I'm going to come to now. I haven't got a name here. It just says iPad. Yes, that's you. Yes. Yeah. Waving. Do you want to unmute? <laughs> Yeah, where is there we go. The... Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, could you give um, some suggestions about um, a good light source? I have a lot of issues with um, drawing and getting good light. Yes, definitely. So I would steer clear of any spotlights. So I've got spotlights in my ceiling and I How cannot you... use them because they create the most awful shadows terrible shadows so my suggestion is to use um daylight lamps if you can i have floor standing ones and they're the ones that i use are photography soft boxes so they're quite they they, they stand on the floor and they're quite big they're quite big um but they're brilliant because they diffuse the light and you don't get any of the horrible shadows um they last for ages the lights last oh, for ages okay. um and they're, they're not overly expensive and you can get little desk lamps. You can get lamps that kind of clip onto your table or your drawing board. But I would definitely go for the daylight lamps. Definitely. Thank you. Um, Thank you. you know, because that, yeah, you don't want eye strain or anything. anything How do like I get it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right. Okay. So I'm going to come to Tammy. Hi, can you unmute? Yeah, sorry about that. Hi. That's all right. Hi. Um, Hi. I have a question. So I would like to join your Ignite group. Uh, would I then also have access to the Patreon? And I'm sorry if you already covered this. I missed the first uh, 10, 15 minutes. But I just wanted to know if the Ignite uh, group also included your Patreon channel uh, videos. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Ignite has every single video that Patreon has. Okay. And then a whole load more. And it's also in a much easier way to navigate. Uh, it's all I've chosen a, um, a platform to put all my videos on that is searchable. So you can search with a word or a phrase and it actually picks up uh, parts of videos for you. So, um, you know, it'll search through the video, which is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And they're all put into playlists. So it's very, very easy to navigate. So you get all of my back, back catalogue of, of videos, uh, including everything that was that's on Patreon. You get a whole lot more. And then you also get my um, my course as well, the, the foundations course. So there's a huge, huge, huge amount of, of information there. Um, you know, but that's it's all perfect. really, really nicely laid out. Okay. Cool. By the way, I'm the one that did the, the, the horse with all the likes on your Facebook page. And now it's because of your videos. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Tammy. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to come to uh, Charlotte, Charlotte Compton. Hi, can you hear Hi, me? Hi, I can indeed. Hi. Um, so I've been drawing for the last uh, 14, 15 years for many mental health reasons. Um, is it wrong to be doing this because of accountability? Like, do you, um, how do I explain it? like weekly, like drawing along and stuff like that. Um, you also had it said you had business sort of to actually like help start. What's that sort of part of the program as well as your like tutorials and stuff? Mm. Um, I was trying to understand what sort of like helping make a business area of it was. Okay, okay. So basically, wh why would you why would you join and what would you get? Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, rather so, than just being an artist, like, how can it help me develop you know, and get to the next level? Yeah. Okay. And is that something that you want to do? Do you want to make, start making a I business? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I've got an intense fear of it. So I was kind of hoping that this might. Yeah. Cross that. You. Yeah. I completely get that. So what um, my ultimate aim in the Academy is to help people develop their colored pencil work. But a big part of what I do is to help people with confidence and mindset, because that that to me, 
you know, the Ignite membership is all about teaching colour pencil, but actually it's really not. It's more about helping people become more confident in themselves um, and create, oh, I've got a moth now. <laughs> oh, it's landed on my glasses, hang on. Um, it's um, yeah, it's more about creating that helping people become more confident. So what you get in the um, in the membership is you get an awful lot of um, the things around confidence. So every single one of my tutorials will have something um, to help build confidence. So I go in a little bit into the psychology of drawing. You know, why do we have a fear of starting? Uh, why do we why are we scared about picking colors? Um, you know, what happens if we go wrong? What's going through your brain when, when we're going wrong? What are the levels of, I go through the levels of competency, you know, when we first start out and then, and it's kind of like a sliding scale, you get better and then you drop down again. And why, when you get to a certain level, do you suddenly feel like you can't draw anymore? Um, you know, and it's, and, and I go into all of that throughout my tutorials as well as teaching you how, you know, we're gonna put this color here and we're gonna put that color there. I also talk about that. Every month we have a confidence session where I go through all sorts of um, different areas of helping to build your mindset, helping to build your confidence from things like building a mood board and why a mood board is really important to things like creating a, um, we did the, like the jelly baby tree, um, which is kind of where you, 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 you decide where you are now and where you want to be and what changes you want to make. So there's an awful lot of coaching element in my teaching as well. Um, and you get the whole back catalogue of all of those confidence sessions that you can go through. There's personality. We did a personality type session. The business drop in again, I do each month. And we talk about different elements of running an art business. And it's not necessarily for people who are really, you know, um, set on building a, a strict business. It could be that you just want to pick up on commissions that you want. Yeah, to it's, it's just the stage from I do this amazing work that I I'm really proud of but I can't share it with anyone right it's the state that confidence of actually sharing it with someone let alone someone paying you yes to do it yes and I guess it's that kind of barrier that I was hoping it is it if is. that's covered that would be brilliant absolutely absolutely it is and what's wonderful as well is that the community are so incredible. You will find people in, in the community who have been exactly where you are and have now made so many different changes that, that everything is completely different. You know, I've had members who couldn't show their face on Zoom. They couldn't talk. And then last year they joined me in one of these sessions and came on live and talked about their experience. That to me is, is incredible. That's brilliant. That's, that's work that you need to put in. But if you've yeah. got the tools to be able to do that, that's that's when things things going to happen. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Lovely question. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, Carol, with your hand up there. I am going to come to the um, the, the chat as well. Um, I'm not a, a pencil artist. I, I paint, but I'm not skilled in pencil art how would you know where to uh, to start are there any subjects you'd avoid is there something to to go for that would give you confidence to to start out i've looked at the kind of pencils and things that you use in the paper yeah um but do different animals create different challenges is this something you you know avoid to start off with so it doesn't put you off so personally I'm a jump in at the deep end kind of a girl. <laughs> so my honestly, my my suggestion is if you have a passion for a certain subject. Go for that. Um, I've got um, if you want to, I've got lots and lots of free tutorials that you can you can download and you can do um, drawing like a cat's eye. So getting just getting used to the That's pencils and how they work um, yeah. is is really, really is really important. Just and having the confidence to be able to put the pencils down, mix the colors, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, <coughs> I have those. I have those that are going to be that will be helpful for you. Um, and um, and I, I honestly think choose something if you're passionate about a certain animal or a certain flower or whatever that's always going to motivate you and it's always going to keep that that focus and that motivation up um so i would that's what i would do i would choose something that that excites you i look at your work and it is so detailed compared to the things that i would draw it's how to get from that to that 
so to get from that, you've seen my initial, you've seen my my first my first drawing, which wasn't detailed at all. Um, so to get from that to, to where I am now is um, asking questions, is putting the practice in, is finding what I want it to look like and making the changes and practicing those changes and techniques and everything. So it's, 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 sorry. No, no, no. It's, 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 a, it's the one place that you always start from. I always start with eyes. Eyes, Generally, right. I always start with eyes. You know, if you can get used to drawing eyes, you've got layering, you've got color mixing, mm -hmm. you've got details, you've got values, you've got everything in an eye. Right. And then and then everything else will come from there. Thank you very much. No Thank problem. you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, right, I'm just gonna come through into the chat here. Oh gosh, there's, uh... let's have a look. Um, right, so let me see where it says question. It's the problem with the chat, you have to go through everything. Um, okay. Uh, right, I'm just going to pick up the ones that say that say question in front of them. Oh, that, that's quite a good one. It hasn't got question in front of it, but I'm going to talk it anyway. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Dee. Putting grapes. Yes, that was a real ne nemesis of mine trying to draw grapes. Um, Dorothy, how to keep motivated in a drawing when it goes on for more than 15 hours? I would say that the majority of my drawings go on for more than 15 hours. When I first started drawing, um, I would get really into and enjoy drawing the features and the eyes and all of those gorgeous little details and then I'd finish because I, I drew animals I'd finish drawing the face and I'd get down to sort of like the the neck area and, and I would rush it and it would just be rushed and I'd be like oh gosh let's just because my mind was on the next piece so I'd have a another piece in mind for my next drawing so um what I now do is I have taught myself to love every single part of my drawing and I've taught myself to fall in love with the process of drawing, not the outcome, not the finished piece. I love the finished piece, but I love the process. So for me, it doesn't matter how long a piece takes. I don't get bored with it. I love every single tiny part of it. Um, and that is something that I can, I've worked on and it is definitely something that you can change. You know, you might be sitting there thinking, well, you know, how can I love drawing like a horse's neck and it's taking me forever and ever. The process of laying down pencil, of mixing pencil, of getting completely absorbed in just that 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 wonderful coloring um, is amazing because then you get into the flow and you disappear and all of your worries and all of everyday life disappears. And that's what I love about color pencil and why I love that it's a really, really slow process. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay, so somebody somebody here has, has just asked if they're going to get all of the supplies and everything for enrolling. Absolutely. So if you have joined the wait list, you will already have received an email with all of the supplies that, that you're going to need. However, please don't think that you have to buy all of the pencils and all of the paper. You really, really don't. Um, if you've already got pencils, I would I would really urge you to use what you have. Oh gosh, this little moth thing is <laughs> flying all over the place. Um, uh, if you've got if you've got together. if you've got pencils, then use what you have. Okay. Um, everybody wants all of the pencils, and and that's absolutely fine. But if you know if you're on a strict budget, please don't worry about having everything. But those are uh, that will have been emailed to you, and we'll email it out again. Um, okay, so Amory here, uh, I can't draw at all. I can only go off a trace. Amory, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, I supply all of the line arts, everything like that. Many, many artists trace. Many artists like me can freehand as well. We choose to trace because it just makes the starting process that little bit quicker. Don't let anybody tell you you can't draw because you have to trace because the, the there's a real skill. There's a skill in going into freehand. There's a real skill in actually filling in that freehand. Um, you know, so you need to understand all about values and all of that kind of thing. Um, Okay, so do, 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 do. The, 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 the days and times that I do my live drawings. So art club is always on a Tuesday at one o'clock and we draw for two hours. Um, the confidence session is on a Wednesday evening, once a month on a Wednesday evening from 7 p.m. 
the business drop-in is on a Thursday once a month from 2 p.m. And then we have a skills club as well, which is, again, once a month on a Thursday at 2 p.m. I also do a Q&A on a Monday at 2 p.m., but we're going to be doing some in the evening as well. Um, okay, so... Bonnie, oh, yes. can I jump in here? Of course you can. Um, I'm 68 and I've got MS and in a wheelchair, and unfortunately... I've lost the use of my right hand, which was my dominant hand. Yeah. And I'm having problems um, transferring the pictures that I want to do, mm. uh, like in a line drawing onto the um, eventually finished piece. Right. Could you make any recommendations for that? <clears throat> so um, I think the easiest way to do it is to pr is to print out your line drawing right and then cover the back in either a soft pencil or a pastel i don't really tend to use pastel because i, I am allergic to it but right. i do have i do have a caran d'ache <laughs> pencil that i use occasionally and i cover the back just scribble over it scribble over it um and then you would trace over the top you put the you put the pastel next to your surface that you're going to be working on. Right. Trace over the top, or get somebody else to trace over the top. Okay. Well, I'll hopefully be joining you when I can get my left hand going with the pencils. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> well, Bonnie. Yeah. You know, I I really like the film. She could use the film by oh. putting her her picture right behind the film you and going so right. that way and she won't have to transfer that you would be great so, for her you are so right emma that is a brilliant suggestion so drafting film which is semi-opaque okay you could print your line art out put it behind it and uh -huh. you can see it through the film and then you can just start drawing super thank amazing. you very much. amazing emma thank you so much for that mm. awesome <laughs> right i'm going to come back up here to um now then oh i've got marianne there yeah hello uh, bonnie from the netherlands Hi. can you hear me i can yeah oh very good uh, it's first time i'm uh watching a q a like this um it just started two weeks ago with the, the dog nose now we're still trying to get the cat's eye and a little bit of fur around it. Well, that's a, that's a hell on wheels, I would say, <laughs> the fur. But uh, I have a question. When I would join you, um, like like now I am tr uh, tr yeah, have tricks with the fur. Um, when do I get a good um, critic from you? Can I get that like one-on-one? -on -one? Because in the past, when I was on a course, uh, I found it much easier when people could really talk to you and say uh, how you should do it. Yes. Um, what can I expect when I join? Because I think it's a little bit expensive for my taste. So, um, yeah, is it worth it? Okay. Yes, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a logical answer. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you've got your yeah. answer. On to the next. Um, no, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely. So I critique a hundred pieces of my students work uh, a month. So 25 pieces a week, which I think is more than any other artist does. And the reason I do that is because I'm, I really am passionate about people developing their work. Now, obviously it means when we do it on a booking system. So an email comes out and we use time zones. So an email comes out on a different time zone every week. So everybody get, does get a chance to be able to book a critique in. I'm always available on the on the uh, membership group. So if you were to post your picture in the membership group and you wanted some help, I will always come and help. And you'll also get members coming and helping as well. So um, a critique, if you were to get a personalized critique, it would be between probably five and probably about five to eight minutes. Um, and what I do is I you send your picture you send your reference photo, you give me any notes that might be relevant, that you're maybe challenging, this part's challenging or that part's challenging or whatever. I then put them up on my screen and I record my screen and I talk you through what I think you've done really well. So I'll always, always congratulate you on what you've done well, because that's incredibly important. And then I will talk you through what you could do to improve and where you can um, 
uh, what changes you need to make to develop even further. And that's what that's what one of my critiques looks like. Um, I also have a critique of the week. So I'll pick out one of the, the 25 each week and it will be a critique of the week. And the everybody's critique is, is included in one video and that's then posted in the hub and you'll be able to find your, your critique in there. I urge people to watch other people's critiques as well because you get so much information from them. So much yeah, information. I, yeah, I understand. But uh, still the question about the, the, the times you mentioned earlier, earlier that you are uh, teaching us or showing us how to do things. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on a Monday on 1 p.m. you said. When I missed that, can I, I uh, later um, um, watch it back uh, yes. from, from internet or? Yeah. 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 So every live stream that I do is recorded. Yeah. And it's uploaded the same day. So if you miss it, you can then just go into the video hub and rewatch it. Yeah, and still get uh, critiques on that piece or on that part from yeah. you if I wanted it to. Yes, you can either book in a critique and have like a proper structured critique or you can post it in the group, um, tag me and, and I will help. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> no problem. And to give you a bit of an idea about, so I, had, I, I have critiques done. It costs me uh, £400 to have uh, three pieces critiqued just just to give you an idea of how much it costs to have uh, you know if you were to go privately to have a critique done so 30 pounds is pretty good <laughs> i would say so <laughs> i uh, make all my work post it uh, get, get a member yes. for a month and then post it to you yeah well thank you thanks right. everyone thanks. yeah thank you um oh hang on a second right so let me just come back into the uh the group here again okay so uh, we've got a question here how long is the membership open for membership is open for two weeks this time the membership's open for two weeks and then usually I, I open it sort of every 90 days this time i'm not going to be opening it again until later on in the year so if you if you did want to join the academy and this isn't like a hard sell this is just me being truthful um if you didn't want to, if you did want to join the academy this time uh, do um because it's not going to be open again until uh, the back end of the year um so yeah it's open for for two weeks um okay so uh, do you cover pastel mat with pencil or pastel or can it just stay white uh, I I don't use pastel at all. If I'm going to do a background, I'll use my pencils. If I'm not going to do a background, it just stays white. I keep it clean by using my putty eraser, probably every half an hour just to dab off uh, some of the dust. Um, okay, so we've got here, what's the difference between Patreon and the Academy membership? Um, oh, I, we've, I've talked to you, Marianne, about that, that's fine. Um, and Hilda's being amazing answering these questions as well. Thank you, Hilda. Um, what program do you recommend to be able to pick correct colours to use in our drawings? Oh, that's a really great question. So I, I don't really recommend using a program. You'll see, you will see artists who do recommend uh, colour picker apps or using Photoshop or something like that. And, and that's their method and, and that's brilliant and that's great. For me, I use quite a simple method when you're first starting out of picking three colors. Um, you look at the main part of what you're drawing, you pick the lightest color you can see and match it to the colors that you've got. You know, if you've got a brown that looks like the brown or a yellow that looks like the yellow, do that from the beginning. Choose the lightest color, a middle color and a dark color and start with those three colors. And then you then learn to pick colors that will work with them. So you'll start to understand about color theory. You'll understand that using a little bit of purple or violet in with oranges gives you a really fantastic uh, shadow. Uh, you know, reds and greens are gonna give you really lovely shadows together. So for me, it's more about understanding the color, learning the color and learning to use it. And the more you do, the more you'll see. The, the more you start drawing in colour, the more colour you will see. You will start to be going out for your walk with the dog or you'll look at your dog and you'll go, oh, my goodness, you'll, you've got Caput Morton Violet in your fur there or you've got a bit of, you know, <laughs> sky blue or something. Um, the more you do, the more you see. And, and I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of using t technology or apps or anything. However, I would say that if you are struggling, Colour pencil picker app, I think it's the pencil picker app is quite a good one that people use. Um, so, you know, don't just because I've said don't use one, don't don't not use it. But for me, when I first started, the best thing for me was just I need this brown. 
or what's the color that's nearest to it? Oh, this one, I'll use that. Um, and not being too precious about getting color absolutely spot on. Um, okay, so I've got one here. Uh, I've seen how important layering many different colors are, but I don't see the different colors you see. Right now, I'm just using the colors you use in the tutorials, even though I don't see those colors. Will noticing different colors come with more experience? Yes. And this actually is a great question to go on from that color picking. We all have our own favorite colors. OK, so I have a core set of colors that I use on a regular basis. I've got all of the colors in the world <laughs> and I would probably only use about 20 of those colors on a regular basis. Although people in here who are part of my academy will probably say I use an awful lot more, but I tend to use a, a, a core selection of colors. You will find your favorite colors that you will start picking time and time again. So I very quickly found a recipe for eyes that work really well. I only use polychromos for eyes because they layer particularly nicely and you can see through them. Um, I use um, dark indigo, black, dark sepia, uh, terracotta, this is for like a brownie, orangey eye, terracotta, burnt sienna, and I use some of the warm greys and everything. I found that that recipe has 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 worked beautifully for me when it comes to using, you know, uh, the, drawing those sort of orangey coloured eyes. So you will find your own colours and, and it is very, it's absolutely, everybody will see colour differently. So I might say, oh, I'm seeing a pink in there and you'll sit there and you go, I cannot see any pink in there at all. However, the more you do and the more you look and the more you see, suddenly you'll go, oh, hang on a second, I can see a bit of pink in there. Um, and it's just training your brain and your eyes to see a little bit differently. But please don't worry about colour. The most important thing when you're trying to draw a realistic subject isn't colour, it's your lights and your darks. That's where you need to really concentrate. Cheryl, yes, it does cost uh, to join the Academy. I've got a huge amount of information in there. Uh, it costs £30 a month or £300 uh, a year. Um, and you get all of the tutorials, you get the, you know, a chance to have your work critiqued and you get all of the live streams with me as well. Um, oh, oh, so that's a quite good question. What time do you think should you should schedule a drawing time? Everybody is different. I tend to draw in the evening. So I start drawing at 7 p.m. and I draw until about 11 or 12. That suits me really, really well. Um, weekends, I tend to draw actually, if I can, all day over a weekend, if I possibly can. But I would suggest that you choose a time that is quiet, that you're not going to be disturbed um, and that you can sit down for 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, uh, you know, whatever suits you. OK, so I'm going to come back up here uh, and I'm going to come to um, Crystal. Crystal there. Hi. 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 That was, uh, what? Colour pencils do you tend to use? So I use um, I use predominantly polychromos. So Faber Castell polychromos. I use Caran d'Ache Pablo and I use Caran d'Ache Luminance. And then I also have some additional ones that I use um, occasionally. The Derwent Light Fast, uh, the Derwent Studios or, or Artists, and I also like the Derwent Drawings as well. But predominantly it's the polychromos, Pablos and Luminance that I use. Okay, thank you. No problem, thank you. Uh, let's come to Pamela. Yes, hi. 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 Um, yeah, so I'm just a beginner and um, do I need to get pastel mat to right away or can I just start drawing and practicing on just regular um, canvas paper? Yeah, okay. So I would say use use what you have. Um, I do use pastel mat quite a bit. So I use three different types of surfaces. I use the drafting film, I use a hot press smooth paper, and I use pastel mat. Pastel mat is my absolute favorite surface. It's the surface I choose to draw on. What I would say is with the tutorials that are done on pastel mat, there's a particular reason why I've done them on there. And it's usually because I can use light color over dark. Light over dark is the holy grail for colored pencil artists because you can't get light over dark particularly easily when you're using a smooth surface. A surface like pastel mat is classed as an abrasive surface. It's not sanded, but it's made from a plant cellulose. So it's got a really lovely sort of velvety surface. And it means that it takes lots and lots of layers and you can get light colors over dark, which is the most amazing thing to be able to do. Um, so I would say don't 
stress about it. Um, but it, it's it's quite good to have a little bit of pastel mat if you can get some because it will make a big difference. Okay, so I it just I could go ahead and start off with it and then get used to it and then yeah. I, I will see a difference in that. Yeah. Like I said, I'm a complete beginner, but I love I love your style, the way you work. Um, yeah, I you. I just I I want to do this. So oh, thank amazing. you. Oh, no problem. problem. The one thing I would say when you first start drawing on pastel mat is you'll hold your hands up in horror and scream and go, what is this? <laughs> what is this work of the devil? Um, because it feels like you're drawing with a poker to begin with. But once you get used to it, it's amazing. Does it come in like a tablet? Yeah, you like can buy it. Um, I've got, I've got a, a pad of it here, look. So you can buy it in oh, a okay. like that. Yes. And it comes yes. in different numbers. Um, so it comes in different numbers um, to, regarding the color. So the number is down to the color rather than anything else. The 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 surface is all the same, but it also comes in sheets as well. But you can buy it as a as a small pad. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Pamela. Uh, right. Okay, I'm going to come to uh, Mimi there. Hi, oh, hi. <laughs> can you just unmute, Mimi? I have forgotten what I was going to ask, but I have so many <laughs> questions to ask. Uh, one is, is I, I have been doing watercolor for two years. I'm very interested. I've done some drawing as a kid. I drew a lot. Will it impinge? Do I have to devote my entire self to one medium or can I enjoy myself as I want to do and and spread out and do colored pencils and pastel, which I also like very much without detriment? Yes. Oh, you, do, okay. you do what you want to do. And I would say if you I, I only use one medium and that's because I absolutely love colored pencils and I I just want to use them. But, you you know, watercolor, pastel, oil, charcoal, whatever you want to do, you are going to learn things from different mediums that you can bring into other mediums. You're going to learn about color. You're going to learn about values. So you do whatever you want to do that makes you happy. Thank you. And I have one more question, which is. Uh, I'm in New York right now, but um, I spent two years at my vacation home at Martha's Vineyard, and I have all many of my supplies there, including my 120 Faber, Faber Castelli Castell uh, Polychromos. If since you're only going to be have two weeks to join uh, the academy, is, is there any way of like postponing? the actual start date until for like, I'm going to be there on June 1st, or is it all chronologically? Um... No, it's when it's how you want to do it. So it's all there right from the beginning. So it's not, it's not drip fed through. So some courses are drip fed and you're like, right, you have to do this this week. You have to do this this week. I haven't done it that way. You, you can start whenever you want to start. Can I make the year from where I want to? And is it, if I sign up, will that will I be able to say I'd like to begin June first with this membership since it's a a limited? Uh, yeah, uh, no. So unfortunately, not. If you have to kind of join up within that within that two okay. week period, unfortunately. Um, and, and all right, and yeah. I'm going to be greedy and say what? How much does the Ignite membership cost? And is it also yearly? Yes. So it's th it's thirty pounds a month, which works out about thirty six dollars. Or you can you can do it yearly, which is three hundred, which works out about. So it's the same as the academy. Yeah, the academy is is ignite. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. a little bit. Sorry, a little bit confusing. So the academy is like umbrella and ignite great. is membership. Yeah, yeah. I okay, should great. I should say that more often, but yes, yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you Brilliant. so much. Thank you. Your work is beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dean, with your gorgeous Labrador drawing behind you. Hello. Hi. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask you, that Labrador drawing is the first dog drawing that I did. I did it like three weeks ago. I only started in December, but I was good at heart at school. Um, I started painting in December. I joined an art class in January. Uh, I joined a beginner's art class, but it's very random and it's very covering all different things, all different mediums. Um, and then I discovered pencils. And when I first was told about that, I thought what crayons children use them. And I started using them and I fell in love with them straight away. The control is so much better than with a brush. Anyway, so what I'm asking is I'm, I'm now 59 and I'm, I'm loving doing this. Um, and that dog turned out really well for my first one. I've it just did. done my first human portrait. Oh, I mean, it, it's not brilliant, but I think for my first one, I was really pleased with it. Yeah. Um, is it too late at 59 
to consider this, seeing as I seem to be progressing quite quickly and quite well with it, would I be able to change career at this late in life doing this? Oh, gosh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Honestly, Dean, and looking looking at your your drawing as well, it looks absolutely amazing. Oh, I have <laughs> some I have some amazing, um, amazing people in, in, in my membership. One lady I can, oh, she's sitting right there, Judy. <laughs> so, um, Judy, I don't know whether you want to unmute and just give a little bit of an insight as to. Oh, can you unmute Judy? Oh, she can't. Well, I'm 71 and I just started Find it. in January. Yeah. Right. There we go. Okay. Uh, I started, I started at 71. Yep. Do you do it and, as a career? Uh, I take commissions because I am retired. I don't want to have a big business, but I have, I have a healthy commission business and, uh, it's the best decision I ever did. Uh, believe me, it's it's a passion. And uh, I am now, uh, well, I'll tell you, I'm going to be 77. And so I, I'm just growing and learning and still in, enjoying every second. Well, that, that's that's very encouraging. I, I, um, I, I, I didn't paint all my life. I thought about it and I didn't do it because at school I, I did a big piece of work at school when I was 16 years of age just before I left and the art teacher painted all over it um, and said to me you're not a camera and that put me off doing art right up until last December <laughs> and then when I see work like yours Bonnie I think well to try telling her she's not a camera I mean I know that you're not a camera but your yeah. work is so good and if I could do anything close to that then oh, you know you. what I would say what I would say Dean is looking at the your drawing behind you and and if you've just started you're you get you get different types of people um developing at different speeds I developed quite quickly um yes. just because of the sort of person I am and I can see that your development I think the trajectory of your development is going to be quite steep so I would say if you have the passion and you want to do it it's definitely something that you could do most definitely yes. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. That's no very, problem. very helpful. Nice to speak Thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Um, right. I'm going to try and get through all of these all of these questions um, with people's hands up. Uh, now I've got Z uh, Zill. Yeah. Hi, hi. Bonnie. Hi. Um, hi. hi. Um, I joined Bonnie's Ignite membership uh, about a year ago and I've taken sort of a back seat. I'm not one to come on camera and I do things mostly in my own time. Um, but I do want to tell everyone this is the real deal. Um, I've loved the Academy. Um, all your questions will be answered thoroughly that you're asking today in the membership and um, it's worth every cent. I will be going into my second year and I completely love it. I'm, as I said, I'm a quiet person, so I don't come on too often, but I really wanted to say that this, it's worth all your investment. Um, I do have a quick question <laughs> that I'd like to ask Bonnie. Um, I have been using the trace down paper on your, um, uh, line drawings, which have been really helpful. But now I want to do my own line drawings as I'm starting to come into my own a little bit more. And I don't know if I should buy a Pico Genie projector or use a special app for those line drawings. Um, okay, so first of all, thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not paying Zill to say that. <laughs> no, of <laughs> really course not. That. Absolutely really not. That. Very sweet <laughs> you, thank you. Um, so I would say that um, there are apps that will create your line art for you. Um, what tends to happen is you get an awful lot of detail and information in the in the app because it kind of makes a line art of everything. Um, and if you're somebody who likes all of that detail, that's great. I tend to like mine a little bit simpler. I get quite confused with all of the lines and everything in there. So I, my line arts are created on an iPad oh. and a pencil. Okay, okay. I, I don't have an iPad. No, well, that's, I, I used to create, I used to use Trace Down. Okay. Which is, which is very useful. Um, I found that actually using a bit of pastel on the back, not that used pastel, but a bit of pastel on a, on a, um, a printout and then using that, you, it comes off easier. Okay. Um, but the, the projectors are brilliant. A the good idea. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, they are a good idea. I use a projector, but I tend to now project my line art rather than the actual physical photograph because I can then see much more clearly. And the, oh, I the, see. The good reason for doing that as well is projecting a line art is you can get a cheaper projector 
because you oh, okay. need the high resolution. You need something that's quite high resolution to be able to see a photograph that you project. But right. Not, you don't. So you can get a cheaper one. So it's just a matter of preference, really. Yeah, right. Definitely. Okay. Um, I also wanted to say before I go, um, Bonnie has a great foundations course, and she's not paying me to say this. <laughs> um, and you know, it starts so slow um, for those that don't want to start too fast. And I really found that beneficial. It takes many hours to go through and it's just Bonnie's funny. It's incredible. So <laughs> go for it, everyone. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Dill. That's so sweet yeah. of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. So I'm going to come to Emma. Emma Crock. Yes. Thank Hi. you. Hi, um, I, I started your Ignite class the middle of January and I've completed all 69 of the modules um, and loved all of it. And I'm drawing with you on, on uh, Tuesdays too and having a great time. Um, so thank you so very much. And to the gentleman that just asked the question, I'm 71 also um, and, and having a great time. My question to you, Bonnie, is do you spray your finished product with anything when you're done? No, no, I don't. And the reason why I don't is because I did. So when, when you first start out with any new hobby or, or skill or whatever, if you're anything like me, you tend to get everything. Oh, I need this. I need that. I need the other. So I, I did spray one of the first pieces that I did and it changed it dramatically for, for the mm. worse. Um, and then doing a little bit of reading, asking in groups and everything, I realized that actually an awful lot of colored pencil artists don't spray their work. Some do, um, but I choose not to. So I'm just very careful with mine. So when I finish, there's always a piece of glassine, which is sort of like that, um, that crystal paper that goes over the top of it. Yeah. And I store mine in a, in a drawer. Uh, and then okay. they either stay in the drawer or they go and get framed. But I don't tend to use a fixative. If you do want to use a fixative, make sure that you shake the can incredibly well. You test that the spray is coming out evenly and you follow the manufacturer's recommendations for the, the, um, the distance that you spray it onto your piece. Um, but okay. it, it, can make it, it can make it darker. Okay. And do you, uh, in your one Ignite, in your Ignite classes, or do you have anything that you talk about backgrounds? Because most of all that I do doesn't have a background, but I find backgrounds extremely uh, scary. Yeah. Well, I found backgrounds extremely, extremely scary up until I started doing them. And now I love them. Oh, <laughs> so okay. I have, yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking, oh, how can I possibly do a background if I'm using colored pencils? I can't blur. I can't blur anything. I, I have to use pastels, and I can't use pastel. So um, I've got a, um, a quite a lot of tutorials now that have backgrounds. Okay, so I should just go into those and maybe just do some backgrounds, and then yeah. maybe I can put it together then. Absolutely, absolutely. So I've got quite a lot: the panda, the bobcat. Um, there's uh, parts of the the um, the girl in the scarf, the man. Um, what else? Oh, there's there's uh, a couple on drafting film that have got backgrounds on. So quite a lot with backgrounds. I, I like a background now. Okay, and that'll be interesting putting it on that film to see how you get it smoothed yeah. out. And and yeah. um, I thought about doing some on the background of the film, and yeah. I don't know if it will come through, but it might give it enough. Go and have a, a look color. at. Go and have a look at the first tutorial you need to have a look at when you want to do a background is Milo, which is the cat. Okay. And, and that is a brilliant tutorial because it's. I experimented it. I can see Judy giggling away there because she remembers me <laughs> trying to use this because uh, I used oil pastels on it, and and I for some reason I had some toilet roll. <laughs> On my, on my desk next to me. And I realized that if I wiped it off, it created this most amazing effect. Um, oh, so okay. a really good tutorial to have a look at as to how to make a background on, uh, on drafting film. Okay, well, thank you so much, Bonnie. Thanks, Emma, thank you. Um, okay, I'm gonna come to Kathleen, Kathleen Morgan. Hello. Hi. This is so exciting for me. <clears throat> this is only like my second Zoom and like, forever <laughs> and i'm talking to you from alabama in the united states oh. um i i am literally a brand new beginner i have no skills in this at all i just feel like i'm retired and i really want to do this and i want to try it out so maybe you could you know give me a where to start 
Okay, so welcome and thank you so much for your for your lovely question, Kathleen. Um, I would start, um, I mean, if you wanted to start now, I would definitely go and um, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd love you to start on my tutorials, but you know, it, it is quite a good idea to go and have a look on YouTube and see who you resonate with because there's all sorts of brilliant artists out there. If you choose to do some work with me, I have a number of free tutorials on my website and they are, I call them my challenges. They're sort of like 40 minute challenges and you can do them on any paper. You can do them with any pencils you have. And it's just about getting you creative. It's just about getting you putting pencil on paper. Um, they don't have to be perfect, but I give you all of the instructions to be able to create like an eye or some fur or, you know, paws or um, there's a rose there as well. Uh, I'm about to create another one, which is some uh, tulips. Um, and there's a dog's nose too. So I, I would I would start there, definitely start there. Um, and just get a feel of how, how those pencils work. And then if you do join me in the academy, um, you would start with the uh, foundations course and you go through the modules and you'd learn about all of the pencils. You'd learn about all of the, the, the surfaces. Uh, you'd learn a little bit about color theory. I'm not a technical person. I don't, um, I get confused about things. So I try and make things as simple as possible. Um, That's good. You know, so, so everything is simple with me everything is simple um you know so uh, so yeah that's where i would start definitely okay now the foundations um course how much does that cost in in so american the, not in pounds i don't know what that means okay so the the foundations is part of the ignite membership so if you join the membership you get the whole foundations course in there it's, okay it's about 40 hours. However, you don't have to do it all. You can dip in and out. And it's also certificated. So when you finish it, you get a certificate to say you've completed it. Um, so the whole membership, if you were to, to join, is £30 a month. Um, and that's every month you would pay £30. Or you could pay for a year, and that's $36. Or you could pay for a year, which is 300 which works out at 360 Okay, so let's start, start over. So the per month one is how much US? 36. 36 per month. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then what was the other you said like per so year? If you, if you join for a year, it's um, 360. So you get two months free. Okay. All right. And for the beginning, for, for starters, how do I get to those? Other free um, beginner ones, you, you said? Can go, I start you can go, yeah, you can go to my website, which is www.bonniesnowdenacademy.com. And up in the menu, go to the one that says freebies, and they're all there. Okay, hold on a minute. Bonnie Snowden. Okay, what's well, after Bonnie Snowden? Uh, Academy.com. Academy. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'll give me somewhere to go because, you know, I, I feel like my mom and my brother got the artist gene. <laughs> oh, you I, would I be would, surprised. You I know. Surprised. I, I I would really like to do that. Um, me, myself, I like to, I like photography, but I'd really like to try it with, you know, like pencil Amazing. and maybe even later, like going to some charcoal or something. I feel Brilliant. like I could do that better than painting. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Teresa. Well, hi there. Hi. Um, just to uh, to echo what you've been saying, I just started with you and did the dog nose, the cat's eye, and they rose and absolutely loved doing them. Um, they were enough to get me hooked. Brilliant. I have, um, I'm one of those people that immediately has to buy everything. So I have a full set of polychromos. I have a full set of Prismacolor, and I actually have a 72 set of Arteza. I see you use Karan Dash, Luminance, and Pablo. What am I missing by not having those particular brands? Oh, that is a brilliant question. What you're missing, uh, particularly with the Luminance, is the high light fastness and quality of the pigments in the pencil. So Luminance are classed as almost like the Rolls Royce of the pencil. Um, they're very, very well made. All of the pigments are highly light fast, so they're going to stay uh, true to color for a long time. The luminance are a soft pencil, so they blend really, really nicely. 
um, and they have some very beautiful colours that are specific to that particular brand. Uh, they have uh, a lot of percent colours. So you'll have things like uh, you'll have a full colour, like 100 percent of like a burnt sienna and then you'll have a 50 percent and then you'll have a 10 percent. Um, and they are so useful, particularly for drawing, uh, you know, sort of human portraits and stuff like that. But also when you're drawing the animals. So the luminance are a very good pencil. Pablo's. Um, they the majority of them are light fast but some of them aren't their pigment is very velvety so when you lay them down they've all got a different quality to them the different brands of pencil they lay down very velvetily velvetily i'm not sure that's a word um so i use them an awful lot when i use pastel mat and i like to use them for blending and smoothing the colors underneath pastel mat is a is a is a fantastic surface but it can be incredibly frustrating because it's quite grainy and the Pablos for me are amazing at getting it, getting the pigment to smooth out. So that's the reason why I use um, those two pencils. I use them in conjunction with the Polychromos. The Polychromos are slightly more translucent. And that's why I like to use them for eyes because you can see through the layers. They are a harder pencil. So when you use them on an abrasive surface, you can actually move the pigment around beautifully. So when I do my backgrounds, I tend to use pastel matte and polychromos and it seems weird using a hard pencil that blends but on pa on pastel matte it works beautifully because you can just move the pigment around um arteza are, are are fine however they don't have the the light fast ratings aren't great so you've just got to be really careful particularly with the fugitive colors like the pale pinks pale blues pale violets uh because they can actually start to fade very quickly uh, but there's, there's, you know not to say you can't use them um but that's why i would suggest you know if you were to get more pencils luminance are a beautiful pencil to buy do you have um, a list of suggested colors to start with because they're so yep. expensive? Yeah, so I have on the same place that I just uh, suggested the tutorials in the freebies section of my website, I have a whole core pencil list and that lists all of the pencils that I use on a regular basis. And they're all split out into uh, the different brands and different colors. So you'll get a list of Polychromos, Luminance, Pablo, and it goes on. It also includes things like Holbein's, Lightfast, that kind of stuff as well. Oh, wonderful. Um, yeah. If I can slide in just another real fast question. I do have your book and there are no line drawings or something that I can use for the labs or the the horse. I'm sure I could come up with something, but the labs, um, I think the only time they appear together uh, in, in um, uh, a photo or in something I could do a line drawing from is on the cover and I've got the book electronically. Is there something available? Um, no. <laughs> so the problem is because it was published by a big publisher in the US that wasn't something that was part of the book unfortunately it is on my list to create and have like a Dropbox or somewhere where people can go and access those line arts what I would say is if you've got some if you've got a digital copy uh, I would probably take a screen grab uh, of, of both of them together um, and use that to create a line art from okay Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Uh, right. OK, so I'm going to speed up so we're not here all night. Lynn. Yes, I'm here, Bonnie. Hi. Hi. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I've been yeah. waiting and waiting. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and keep this very quick. Um, when you do uh, a line drawing uh, directly on your drafting film, what do you use? And when you are framing a drafting film piece, do you put paper behind it or color paper behind it? Right, okay, so I used to transfer my line drawing onto my drafting film. Now, I don't. What I do is I print my line art out and I stick it behind the drafting film and the line art shows through and then I draw straight onto the drafting film and I don't have my line art on the front of the drafting film. On the, on the film yeah Great. and that way actually it it helps with um you know you can get rid of the line art if you want to which i an awful lot of the time i like to just get rid of the line art and it just saves you a job of redrawing the line art again tracing it out 
Right. Now, do you do you do background on most of your uh, drafting film art? No, not, no, I, I've uh, probably, uh, I'd probably say about 80% hasn't got a background and 20% probably does have a background. And what I tend well, to do- Well, being that it's translucent, what does it look like when you frame it? Like, uh, what do you put behind it? So what happens is I will decide on what color I'm going to have the background. Usually it's white. Um, so I'll always have a white piece of paper behind it when I'm drawing. If you decide you okay. want to put another color behind it, I would always recommend you sliding that color through throughout the drawing so that you can actually see what the piece is going to look like. Then when you frame it, you frame it with that piece, that co either colored paper or mount board. Make sure that it's acid free. Most paper is acid free, but make sure it's acid free. <laughs> You slide that behind your drafting film, and then drafting film is a is a funny thing to uh, to to frame. You don't stick it down all the way down because it will wrinkle. You know it changes the moisture levels and everything changes. It's a plastic. So you, what what I tend to do is if it's quite a small piece, I'll use one piece of tape at the top, small piece of tape at the top, probably about an inch long, and I'll tape it at the top. I'll let it hang. And then I'll add my mount or my mat board to it. So that just sandwiches it. And then the frames added. So you suggest doing that behind it rather than trying to use pencil because it'll take forever to do the pencil on the background. No, uh, yes, I would use, you could use anything. You could use a photograph behind if you want that's got a background. If you want to put a background in, I use oil pastels. Oil pastels are brilliant on drafting film. Okay, I can't wait. I've never tried drafting film, but it's amazing. I, I can't wait. It's amazing. I can't wait. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Uh, right. Okay, I'm going to come over to uh, Susan. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Susan. Um, you probably just answered my question about um, drafting film, so I. Uh, the only additional thing I asked was that was do you have a particular type that you'd suggest? Okay, so drafting film, I use three different types. I use uh, polydraw. Mm -hmm. uh, I use the polydraw zero. I think it's zero five zero. It's very thin. It's um, it's scarily thin, but it's a really really <laughs> lovely surface to draw on. Honestly, you'll pick it up and you'll go, oh my goodness, this is so thin. It's like tissue, but it's a brilliant surface. So that's polydraw. Um, polydraw comes in pads usually, and you can get it from Amazon or wherever. Um, then graphics, graphics plastics make two types of film. They make graphics drafting film, and that and it's actually called graphics drafting film, graphics, G-R-A-F-I-X. Um, and the drafting film is the uh, 0 0.005 double matte. So it's matte on both sides and you can draw on both sides. If you can't get the 005, you can use the 004 or the 003. It's just the thickness that is different, but actually it all, see, it all feels very, very similar. Graphics also create a film called Duralar, D-U-R-A-L-A-R. It's got like a hyphen in the middle. Very, very similar to the drafting film, but it's slightly slicker. Drafting film is very smooth. There's no tooth to it. Um, and the Duralar is slightly smoother. Um, I really like all three surfaces. I tend to use the graphics drafting film over any of the other three, uh, but the Duralar is much more accessible. You'll find that you'll probably be able to find that much more easily. Um, you will hear some people saying, oh, don't use the Duralar, it's, it's rubbish or it's student grade or anything like that. It is actually a very good surface. Um, you, all you've got to be careful about with the Duralar is over erasing. If you use your eraser really heavily, you can pull the surface off a little bit and then it's harder to get your pencil down. Um, so those are the three types that I use. Um, basically, you're looking for something that has got a matte, it's a matte film um either one-sided or two-sided two-sided is preferable because you can then uh, add extra layers in on the on the back mm -hmm. thanks for that the other thing um i have a full set of prismacolor pencils and i've found them really they don't seem to like the um pastel matte so um and after trying some of the some of the polychromas i'm 
thinking of getting some of those because I like drawing on pastel matte. I've used it a lot for um, like pastel pencils. Mm. Yes. Uh, so I would, so Prismacolor do work nicely on the pastel mat. However, what happens when you first start to draw on the pastel mat is you're drawing on that tooth. So you've got a, a quite a strong tooth that comes through. If you have a soft pencil, Prismacolor are soft. If you have a soft pencil, the tooth tends to get, the, the pigment tends to stick to the tooth very easily. And it, in the first few layers, it can look a little bit, like we say in Yorkshire, a little bit claggy. It can, you know, it can look a little bit, do you, do you know what I mean? Just a little bit like cakey almost. Yes. Polychromos, because they're hard and dry, um, actually they, they tend to sort of, the pigment sits on top of the tooth. Um, and it doesn't stick to it. So if you want to pick some off with an eraser, it comes off really easily. Or if you want to use a cotton bud or a paper stump, you can blend it really easily. So I tend to use polychromos first, and then I'll use a softer pencil later on when I've got my layers set down. Okay. So you might find that using your Prismacolor and your polychromos together um, uh, uh, will work really, really well. Okay, thank you very much for no that. No problem. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Uh, and we're just going to come to um, Cheryl. Hi. So I don't have a question. I just wanted to say that uh, I joined the Academy in January. I have never drawn a day in my life. As soon as I, it was an anniversary present from my husband that I joined this Academy. Uh, I almost did, didn't because I was worried, worried that I would not have the patience. I probably can't draw anything anyway, but I did it. And even my husband said it was absolutely worth the money. I've just been loving it. So I just wanted to let you know that and everyone else, it's just a joy. Oh, bless you, Cheryl. Thank you so much. Do you know, uh, uh, and, and, and that's brilliant because it then leads me into this question down here from Glenda, which says, uh, brand new also, I've always believed that uh, you need some God-given talent to draw or paint, and I don't have any natural talent, um, but um, joined your academy and I'm following your tutorials and loving them, but I'm having trouble seeing and doing the graduations of the tones. How can I focus and improve? So, you know, talent... I think some people do have a talent for certain things. I certainly have a talent for visualization. I certainly have a talent for being able to um, pick up on uh, different colors and everything. But but how I've got to be good at drawing is not because I'm particularly talented. It's because I'm really passionate about it and I've got perseverance. That for me is how I've got to where I am. I'm just passionate and you know I've, I've got that sort of tenacity to be able to keep going I would say that if you're having trouble seeing and doing the graduations of the tones th that is something that you can definitely practice you can practice almost with a, a uh, like a pressure bar type thing you can practice kind of one color going into the other um, for me looking at the graduation and the tones is an awful lot about pressure so just make sure that you're not using too hard a pressure because if your pressure is too hard there's going to be too much pigment going down and then you're going to get a step in between your colors so when you're trying to blend one color into another you, you, you it's almost like you sort of drift your pencil off where your next color is going to start and then when you come either the other way or you pick up on the color that's going to go into the graduation you can then just pick up on that soft area so you haven't got any hard hard edges um, but I would say um, looking at things like anything that's got leather on Glenda is a really really good uh, tutorial to practice on so anything sort of like one of the horses um, maybe the Perseus tutorial or the um, uh, what's the other one that's got a bridle on um, there's a I can't remember the name of it now but there's another one that's got a bridle on this one on pastel mat and there's one on drafting film that's a really really good way to practice your graduation is when you're drawing something smooth and you've got to go from one color to another so I'd, I'd recommend doing that um uh <laughs> okay what techniques are best to use for mangy gorilla fur <laughs> Um, can you use a craft knife work on pastel mat if you have many layers? Uh, that's so funny, manger gorilla fur. So I'm thinking the gorilla fur is going to be sort of quite, um, it's going to be dark and you're going to have some highlights and stuff on there. So pastel mat is awesome. What I would suggest is that you actually, uh, instead of going in with the craft knife or the slice tool, I would suggest getting a really sharp white Pablo 
Um, and, and also you might find that you've got some blues in there. So something like a sky blue or a uh, light cobalt blue luminance would be really nice. And bring your highlights in over the top of the dark fur. You are going to need a few layers in first. You are going to need to get some nice value and tone down on there. Um, but I would use that over a craft knife. Um, you can use a craft knife, but what will happen on the pastel mat is it will catch on the surface and it will kind of get a little bit wayward. So you can kind of think you're going one direction and then the pastel mat will take you in another. Um, so, you know, I, I would go pencil over craft knife. Um, uh, yeah. Um, OK, so. Uh, OK, so this is this is a great question. How do you get over the fear of going public with your work in the closed Facebook groups? I mean, it's all the other artists that have a level of empathy, but I'm in fear of going public on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Do you know? Um, it can be really, really hard because the general public can be amazingly supportive. And then you get the one or two who are absolutely horrible. And the thing to remember when you put your work out there is to be really proud that you've put your work out there. But what you've got to try and do is anybody that says anything unkind or mean, you, you've got to learn not to take it personally. You get people who do this for a living, they troll for a living and they say mean things for a living and it's horrible. And an awful lot of the time when people, when somebody says something awful about your work, it's because they're jealous or they've got something bad going on in their lives and they want to bring you down to their level of sadness. And I think getting into the mindset of anybody who is unkind and mean and says anything unkind and mean is just not worth putting any of your focus or energy on. For me, I get... I get so many mean comments um, and I either delete them or I, I what I what I do sometimes is I leave them and, and, and my followers will then gang up and, <laughs> and sort them out. Um, but normally what I would do is I would I would delete the comment and I would block the person and I would not give it any more airtime. What, what trolls want and what people who say mean things want is they want you to react and they want to hear that you're upset by it. <coughs> so don't allow them um, to, to get that reaction from you. And the thing is, you've just got to go for it. You've just got to go for it and put your work out there and um, just understand that anybody who says anything mean is just not worth knowing. So you just delete and you block. It's so easy to get bogged down with, you know, you'll get loads and loads and loads of beautiful, beautiful uh, comments and lovely people. You'll get one person saying something mean. And all you do is focus on that one person and not the 300 beautiful comments that people have said. That is a mindset thing. And that's something you just have to try and get over, um, you know, and not take personally because you don't know the person. You don't know. You don't know what they're going through. Um, you know, and you just have to just let them get on with their with their life, basically. Um, so that that's that's one of the biggest tips I can give you for for mean, mean people. And actually, they're probably not mean. They're probably just going through a really, really tough time. Um, OK, so I'm going to come back up here to uh, Lenore. Who have we had you, Lenore? No. Hello, Bonnie. Hi. 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 Thanks for taking my question. I'd just like to say that I'm from Canada. I joined your academy in um, in January and I'm just loving it. I've never drawn before and I'm really I'm working through the foundations course, but um, I get sidetracked by doing um, I've done the eagle, your bear, um, a beautiful cat. And I love the drafting film. But I'm having a problem with the drafting on what to put behind it when you're going to frame it. And I've heard you mention, you know, to put a acid free paper behind. So does that mean that any kind of even a card stock, if it was acid free, would work? Or, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. OK. And um, I'm also having a struggle choosing pastel mat not that easy to get where I am. So I'm, I usually buy through um, Jackson's in U UK, but there's so many different colors and um, I've been sticking to white because I don't know what else to do. And I'm not sure how to choose. Like if I got a different color, um, I guess I should figure out what, what I want to draw, but I, mm. I don't want to get involved in spending too much money on all the paint, mm. all the different papers. 
yeah okay so with the pastel mat um so i tend to use white and and dark gray however okay. I've, done, I've done a couple of pieces on the sand which has worked really nicely and if you're drawing something where the the main mid-tone of the subject is the same color as the surface you're working on that can work really well in your favor okay it means so work so if you had um, like, I'm also trying to do the um, tiger, just mm -hmm. just started it yesterday. So it's got that orange in it. If I had an orangey or a peachy colored paper, would that work well with it? Yeah, good do. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking my question. No problem. If I can jump in, if oh, I yeah. can jump in, Bonnie. Um, I'm in Canada. It's Kimberly. I'm in Alberta. If you look up Delta Art and Drafting Supplies in Edmonton, Alberta, they have pastel mat. Okay. And they have pretty much all of the colors. And you okay. can order online. And I ordered some, like a big sheet of pastel mat, and it came perfectly shipped to me. So, so then you just, you um, cut it down to yeah. size? Okay. Yeah, so they've got, they've got the pads and the different colors. I don't think they have all of the pads, but they've got most of them. So you can find like the anthracite and the white and all the different colors. And they've got the big sheets too of the white, which is okay. pretty awesome. So I took Thank a chance you. and I ordered the big sheets thinking it would come crumpled up by Canada Post, but yeah. it came in one piece. <laughs> so Okay, that's awesome. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Lenore. Uh, right, okay, I'm just going to come into the chat here, just do a couple of questions in the chat, and then I've got two more uh, questions up with the hands up, and then we'll we'll finish. Um, so we've got Diane here, I completed the Academy Foundation course, the Panda tutorial, and I'm now trying to draw something without a tutorial on my own. I keep trying to focus on the good bits, but all I can see are the bits that I'm not happy with. How can I overcome this? Help. Um, okay, Diane, so what I would say is this is a really normal thing to happen. Um, and it takes practice to uh, see the positives before you see anything negative. And what I would say is, if you're seeing the bits that you're not happy with, try and make it a habit that every everything that you go, oh, I'm not happy with that, you have to then find five things that you are happy with. And if you force yourself into finding more things that you're happy with and listing them, um, it's going to become more of a habit the more you do something, the more you're going to make a habit of it. Um, and it, for me, it's really, really important to understand that it's a it's a brilliant thing to be critical of your work. Really, really brilliant thing. But you should never come away from critiquing your work, feeling that you've done a bad job. You should always come away from critiquing your work with a plan of action for how you're going to improve and develop on certain parts. Um, and the only way you're going to be able to do that is to pick up on those things that you, you that have been a challenge. Make sure that when you're picking up on the stuff that you aren't happy with, you change your vocabulary so that you're using non-negative vocabulary. <clears throat> so, for example, I'm looking at a picture of a dog that I've just drawn. I'm drawing a dog at the minute. And there's not a huge amount of detail in the photograph and it's quite a painterly piece. So I would look at the piece and I would say, um, I found this area a little bit challenging because I couldn't see any details or anything in it. However, what I'm going to do when I next sit down and work on it is I'm gonna really, really look at the values in that particular area and make sure that I've got the darks dark enough and the lights light enough and see if I can really kind of push the values so that that is going to overtake any of the lack of detail. That way I'm not pointing at the ear and going, well, that's absolutely rubbish. What a flipping awful drawing. Nobody's going to like that. It just looks horrible because the next time I come down and I sit down to draw, all I'm going to remember is that's a blooming rubbish ear and I'm rubbish at drawing. So you, you, it's changing your vocabulary. You can still come out with the constructive criticism, but make sure your vocabulary is not negative. Everything that you put into your head about your art, about everything, about everything that you do must not have a negative connotation because your brain is going to take that negativity in and then it's going to come back out. So try to format your sentences that you're talking about your art and make them constructive and non-negative. That, that's And if you can practice that, it's just going to get 
um, easier and easier to be able to do that. So that when you look at your drawing, you know, the first thing you're going to go is, oh my goodness, this looks amazing. And that's what you should be doing with every single piece that you draw, regardless of where your development is. Um, I'm going to come back up to Anne. Are you there now, Anne? Anne Scott? Oh, she's there. She's there. Hi, Anne. You just need to unmute. Oh, I got it. Okay. Oh, are you there? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. A, 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 a different Anne. Hang on a second. Sorry. I'm oh, just... okay. oh, we've got Anne there. I'll come back to you. Uh, I'll come back to you, Anne. You, I've just got Zoom user there, but I've got Anne Scott there. Hi, Bonnie. Hi. So nice to be able to watch this. Um, <clears throat> as I told you quite a while ago, we um, moved across the United States and um, probably three fourths of um, the moving company stuff, whether it be furniture or art supplies or was absolutely ruined. So with that, I've just been doing um, drawing of some pencils that I had um, that weren't any of the good stuff and I had collected all of this stuff. So um, same with the uh, um, pastel mat and um, all of it. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm out of the rut and I've just been doing stuff on what I have and nothing good enough to post. <laughs> But um, I did actually today find a box that was labeled um, some kind of um, garden um, pipes or something. And guess what I found? A pack of um, the graphics drafting film. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, yay. Oh, brilliant. That was just this morning before um, we had got that out. And it was just, like I say, all the stuff was just ruined, trashed. And oh, that's such a shame. Such a shame. So we feel yeah. like at our 68 and 71-year-old ages that <laughs> we're down to camping, basically. It's like, um, but we've gotten pretty creative. Um, Amazing. Have you got, have you got a, a question about the the, the film? Um, no, I was always so afraid of it, but I have played with it. And um, well, well, and then when we got here, there was absolutely no internet, and that took about a month to get running. And um, so it's kind of farmland, remote. However, the beauty of that is that there's across there's cattle and there's lambs and oh, um, we have Canadian honkers that winter here and there's deer in the front yard and that's a good thing but I think a bad thing because I've been trying to do um, container um, winter gardening meaning yeah. you do it in Oh, that sounds yeah that sounds that sounds amazing amazing so, i'm just i'm i'm just gonna i'm just i'm, I'm kind of running out of time yeah. so thank but you anyway, so much thank you um, so much for, for i appreciate for it and yeah i look back at some of these and i thought i'll smile at those but i've saved them. i was going to trash <laughs> them but I thought, no, it's an experience, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, thank you, Anne. Thank you for contributing. Um, brilliant. Thank you. I'm going to come to um, Melissa very, very quickly as our last, our last question. Um, Oops, sorry. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Good. So I have uh, several questions, but I'm going to put them in the chat for you, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. If you can just come come up with one, that'd be brilliant because we're coming okay. up to two hours. So yeah. 
so I'm doing some, um, I'm working in pestle mat and I'm doing some areas that are crocheted. How do I go about doing that? You're How doing, would I go about doing that? So you're doing some, sorry, say that again. You're just, there, I'm working on pastel mat and I'm working on a hat and it's crocheted. Okay. And I right. don't know how to do it. You definitely, I don't think you would use a slice tool, correct? No, no. So what I would say with anything that's textured, look at the texture as a whole, look at how it's formed, look at where your lights and your darks sit. So try on pastel mat, try not to draw tiny details straight away. Um, okay. My suggestion would be to look at the, the, the basic color and, and, uh -huh. uh, and shade that's there, use polychromos, and then any light areas, you could just um, use your putty eraser, your kneadable eraser, just to pinch out those little tiny bits. So you end up with a, a very soft feeling, which you get okay. from like a crocheted knitted uh, you know, material. Um, and that's how I would probably tackle it. I wouldn't try and draw each little tiny bit separately. I'd look at it okay. as overall, um, look at the base color of it, get the base in there, and then pick out very gently those highlighty bits. Uh, and then you can go back in and you can start filling the details in. But if you work on the base first and uh, the okay. look and feel, and then come back in and, and get those details in. Okay. Yeah. It's so overwhelming when you yeah. look at it. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Okie dokie. Um, so we've had a couple of hours, which is uh, an hour longer than, <laughs> than we were supposed to have. But of course, as ever, I, I ramble on. Um, thank you all ever so much for joining me um, tonight. Um, this is going to be recorded and it will be sent through to you as well. So if you want to kind of re-watch re it, you can do. But I just want to thank you so much for, for being here, for asking these brilliant questions uh, and for joining me. And if you, if you know, do join me on Sunday, do sign up. Uh, they're all recorded. So even if you can't make it, but you still want to go ahead and draw it, sign up because you'll get the recordings sent to you um, the next day. Uh, so thank you all so, so much for joining me. Have a lovely rest of your day and your evening, and I will see you all very soon. All right, guys. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. Bye. Bye.